Now, ballet, you know, it looks so glamorous and effortless, right? But really, it is an incredibly grueling discipline and a career that is both physically and mentally demanding. Yeah, it's a balancing act that our next guest fully understands as a principal ballerina with the New York City Ballet. Megan Fairchild currently performing in The Nutcracker. She also just wrote a book. It's called The Ballerina Mindset, How to Protect Your Mental Health While Striving for Excellence. Megan joins us live now on the Pix 11 Morning News this morning. Megan, thank you so much for being with us today. So happy to be here, guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, being a ballerina, that's demanding enough, the physicality of it. But you're a mom of three, an MBA student. Lately, we've been hearing more from athletes about the extreme pressure of performing at this level. And I'm thinking of Simone Biles here. Talk about how this all plays out. Yeah. Well, at least as a ballet dancer and, and you know, any kind of Olympic athlete, I kind of think of as being on a similar um, intense pressure cooker situation you are working like your whole life towards something. And then, you know, when we do our performances, it's like you have this one moment in time to execute as you have always prepared and hoped you would. And that can be a lot of pressure. Our, our um, audience at the David H. Koch Theater in Lincoln Center seats about 2,600 people. Yeah. And um, my book is really about the first beginnings of my journey as a principal dancer. I was only, you know, 19 when I got my fig and to be on that stage doing some really hard technical stuff before I knew I could do it, um, it, it took a lot of figuring out how to handle that mental aspect. And right. so that's why I wrote this book. I wanted to share it with, with others. It's amazing to watch you do your thing, you know, but uh, in your book, you talk about how staying competitive and then losing your head are not mutually exclusive. So what does that even mean? How do you prioritize <laughs> y your mental health here? I think that when I first started in this industry, I thought that you had to kind of be a little bit overly intense to have the kind of focus necessary to get it done. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that I actually have become my best artist when I've allowed for space in my life to do other things as well as be a dancer. So I've expanded myself outside of that theater throughout, you know, my 20s and 30s. I've um, been going to school and that's just always helped me have a balance like okay if I didn't get cast in something I thought was important then I can focus on my school class and I always kind of juggled it in that way and it staying well rounded really kept the pressure off of the yeah. thing I did care the most about. It, it's interesting that you bring that up because I think people can look at you as this incredibly elite athlete elite performer and think you know she is not like me there's nothing that is the same about us but yet you're saying that there are similarities no matter who we are and what level we're performing at absolutely i think when i realized that in the company i saw the heroes that i looked up to that were the big principal dancers and when i saw them having their most human moments is when i they really truly became my my heroes and my mentors um, I like just seeing them eat normal food, seeing them make funny jokes and laugh or fall or just all of those things that you might not think a ballet dancer would do. It was like, oh, wow, a huge relief like came to me because I was like, I can just be me. And yeah. I still feel like I'm that young kid from Utah. I don't feel like yeah, yeah. I've you know, change that much, but here I am having a successful ballet career. Yeah, but you know, what you're saying could really apply to anybody who's in a high pressure situation, right? And I think that's the whole point. And, 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 and for folks who are listening, not saying, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not into ballet, so why does it pertain to me? Because it could really pertain to anyone when it comes to mental health and being in that high pressure uh, environment, right? So how, what, is your, what is your one big key advice for someone, regardless of what they're in, who's like, oh my gosh, I feel the pressure and the weight on my shoulders every single day. I think it's important to remember that we're all feeling like that, but we don't always talk about it together. So all of the insecurities you might feel at doing something new or going to that job interview and being comp in any competitive environment where you might feel intimidated by others, you're not necessarily, you know, getting in the heads of those other people and talking about right. it, but you're probably feeling the same way you are too. And I've always found that really comforting. Mm. You know, one of the things that strikes me about the pandemic, because we haven't touched on that yet, and, and when it comes to performance, is I have had to learn how to make myself more at ease with change. That as much as we plan and prepare to do things, that they may we may just need to pivot. How does that play out for somebody like you who's looking to perform? And that's really, you know, everything that you're about in these moments. Yeah, I think that's what the beauty of live performance teaches you is that you can't control everything. You can set yourself up 
as well as possible. And then once the curtain goes up, you just have to let go to the moment and try to be in the moment and enjoy it as much as possible. And, and that's something that performing has really yeah. taught me and helped translate this into universal advice in my book. Good stuff. Hey, Megan, thank you so much for being here today and talking to us all about it. Uh, the book is now out? Yes. There you go. You wanna, you wanna, where, can, where can people get it? You can get it on Amazon and okay. your local uh, bookstore as well. And, and, and cookies for the kids who stayed quiet during the entire segment. Bravo. Yes. <laughs> Happy holidays, Megan. Thank you, guys. Sure. All right, 921.